Hello, and welcome back to part 7 of the Cylon Base Star. Today we're going to start working on some detail painting, getting all that finished up. So let's go take a look. Well, hello everyone. Uh, here we are. On the Base Star, Cylon Base Star. I got the. I went and did a uh, purple lighting for the top here. I did the notch. Um, I got some three millimeter uh, purple UV lights, drilled those holes. I measured back a little bit here. Um, you know, I measured so where this would be, uh, where the light would kind of almost center into these and then drill the hole for the lights to go through. And then I hit them with some Scotch-Brite to scratch them up, to give it a little diffusion. And then on the uh, this piece here, on the underneath, if you remember, it was just open spots. I took um, that scotch tape and uh, put that on uh, on it, so the light actually shines through that scotch tape, and it actually glows the whole entire area. Then instead of just this source light sitting in there, I mean you kind of see it, but before you didn't, it didn't glow any of the outside. It only glued where the bulb was, as far as the brightness of the light. So uh, that scotch tape, you know, diffused it and, you know, works like a fiber optic. So, and then uh, basically what I did there is just actually uh, bent the uh, negatives down at a 90 and then back up at another 90 all into the center there and soldered it for my negative, put soldered my, uh, some uh, resistors onto my positives and uh, bent them all into one point just to have one wire hooked up to it so I can feed all each light and I just got a little jumper here which will probably feed off of one of the uh, LED strips that are here on the other the other half simple as that I got one little like piece of wire tie actually soldered to it so actually what I think I'll do is I'll just twist those together like when I did a light test but the other cool thing that's going on is I started painting the blues, like if you look on the box, even though this is the 30th anniversary, and again, I got the box for the 30th anniversary, but the kit of the older one, but I'm actually kind of happy I got the older one. And the nice thing about the newer revised version is I like that it has all the detail on the inside. Uh, let me grab the big guy. I do have I like how it has all the detail inside here and it has the you know the hangar bay doors and stuff like that but no big deal you're not, not really gonna overly look inside there but it would have been really cool that's the one of the main things that's different from the 30th anniversary and these top pieces if you look on the box how much more accurate they are to that but this will work. This is a fun kit. But they have this blue, and I think it's a little contrasty and a little strong. I'm not 100%. I never really saw it on the show, but I haven't watched that show since I was a kid. But I haven't really remember seeing that in a show, and even pictures, screenshots of the show, it's not that prevalent. So I wanted it a little more subtle. So I actually found a lighter blue. This is called a. Uh, a winter blue from Deco Arts, um, and it worked perfect. It's you know kind of got that faded light look. If you get you know in certain lighting and from the side, you know especially if it's actual the sun, it kind of looks more like a gray or lighter gray panel. So that's kind of cool. So I got one of these done. Got many more to do, and the thing is, is each one of these is different, and there's some spots and other where. Um, and then I have to do the whole other side which is completely different they do give you a view this lights never back there I gotta fix that because it just doesn't want to stay up I want it to stay up like that more so when I show things at the camera I don't know, I have to turn the camera light on but anyway um, they do give you a view of the bottom and the top so that's kind of what I'm going off of 
I try to find photos <laughs> online. Usually you can find, you know, you can find plenty of this shot. Um, usually you can find these, you know, on any other kit, but, you know, one that's important because I can, so I can zoom in. Um, of course, I can't find it online. So I'm going to have to go off to the box and really squint and use my magnifying glass that's on the lens, on the, this light here try to figure out you know most of this here I just got off the front and some of it I can get off the front but when it gets to the other side and all these little pieces that are down in here I'm gonna have to actually uh, look off of that so but that's where we're at I'm gonna keep trucking with the blue but I wanted to just do a little update to show what that's looking like if you can see it like I said it blends in there you can see it in that kind of but it blends in like in certain lights and that's what I like and once we weather it and everything and I think I'm gonna take that lighter aircraft that testers aircraft uh, light gray and uh, give it a two to kind of make it look chippy and blended in and weathered so I might do that as well but yeah I like it and then I got the white which I'm you know probably gonna have to mix because it's kind of looks like an off-white I don't want it white white but it will when I do a wash it'll tone it down too so we'll see it might make a you know a kind of antique white it would look kind of cooler I think would look good there but I'm gonna keep going because this is a lot of painting to do I actually been just doing it by hand um, a lot of them they're raised panels so it's really easy just to do by hand and uh, if I need a straight edge, I'm just grabbing a piece of tape, whether it's, you know, my Tamiya tape or regular, regular mask, you know, regular inexpensive masking tape. Um, some of the skinnier vinyls, if I need to get like, to get in between there to split those two, I just used that and it worked perfect. It ended up that panel line and right at that detail part perfectly. So you, sometimes you get lucky, but I found it's just quicker by the time I mask everything and then airbrush it it's you know it doesn't take I'm only doing one coat anyway because I want I don't want it really contrasty anyway I want it kind of worn and weathered anyway so it's not like I need a real you know paint over it a couple times because a lot of times the craft acrylic it doesn't cover really well you have to kind of um, put a couple coats looks good when it's wet and then all of a sudden it dries and you can kind of see the other base color underneath and that's okay but again I got a lot a lot of painting to do so and a lot of squinting to do and so I'm gonna keep on trucking here okay welcome back um, I decided to do a quick update because I didn't remember exactly where I was last on showing you what I have done uh, started painting the bottom half with the blue. Also noticing a little bit of a warp in this one. This one sits pretty good. That just one has a little bit of a warp there. But let's look at the top. The top's finished as far as all the uh, blue whites and uh, there's a dark gray there too. And you can see all the blue and the white. Or down on those areas and it's quite a crazy pattern there's no rhyme or reason but that's kind of neat so I like it we got the lights under here working all good <clears throat> I want to go in here and black the underneath of them <clears throat> But now I can go in and actually put the rest of the fiber optics. I did the fiber optics already that are under these before I glued these pieces down going across. So, but now I, <clears throat> I'm probably the next thing to do would be put all those fiber optics in on the others. And that way I can get some good glue on this side. It seems to work the best. I dip the fibers in a little bit and then stick them in so they're not like wanting to fall out when you flip them back and forth. And then coming in here with a brush and dab more on it. 
and it cures pretty solid. So, <clears throat> so that's what we need to do to that next. Um, I do want to hit it before that with just a light mist of that aircraft uh, light gray <clears throat> from Testor. Just to give it a little bit of that light color, can use a little more and put a little bit of that lightness on the colors we just put down. So, but just wanted to give you an update. Starting on the bottom, it's kind of tough because I have to look off this box, this tiny picture, because <clears throat> I can't seem to find the internet. Anybody that took that picture and blew it up, so. And then I got to come up with a pattern on the on the inner saucers. It's just a couple out here on the ends, and uh, I see three of them. It doesn't look like on that one they have many going on. They might have one here and one here, and then they show something over here. But it's only one on each. Like say it'd be here and here, here on this one, there on that one, and who knows about the last two. So I'll come up with something. And just to give something in the insides, but yeah, so I'm gonna keep trucking away painting this. It's gonna be pretty much it's the same colors and in the same irregular form. The only thing that's uh, a pattern is these white and blue stripes. Those will be consistent, but what goes what gets painted here is totally different, and the bottom's completely different from the top. So, but that makes it cool. It's fun. You're not painting the same kind of thing over and over again. And I've just been doing this by hand. It's easy. I only have to mask, like, if I'm bringing this stripe, this color down right to there, I'll put a piece of masking tape there, and it usually stops on a panel line, too, so it's perfect. And I only want to put one coat, nice light coat, so you can see, I can see some of the gray through the blue. And that's kind of what I was looking for. I'm gonna keep trucking on this part and uh, one thing I, else I know I decided I'm not gonna use the, the ship's base because I sat it on that little base that it has and it's so flimsy so we're gonna do a rod and uh, and a you know stand from like Hobby Lobby is one of those wooden stands give this thing because it does have some weight to it and that little flimsy stand that they had that one to leave a wobble so we'll have to do some type of thing here, whether we drill this out for this to fit in. And I can do my brass rod that threads in. So, or I can just really probably just drill into that. Now there won't be any sidewalls. So yeah, we'll definitely use one of those. So. I guess nothing to it but to do it. Get back to doing some more painting. And getting ready for Wonderfest. Which is coming up in a few days. So, till then, happy modeling. <laughs>